warm welcome to all of you to this evening session by Erika, senior most spiritual master, international master, but she doesn't want to be called as a master. She says, I am a simple being. She is an embodiment of simplicity, childlike. When I meet her, always I feel I am meeting a, a very, very small baby. <laughs> Innocent, pure, her vibration is like saint vibration. And as if I am meeting a saint, Always I feel like touching her feet. I always feel that because uh, my association with uh, Erika Ji is very, very long. I met her in one of the congresses, spiritual congress that happens in Bangalore. There she came along with another master, Jasmine. First time I met her there, and uh, we invited both of them here, and they both came to Hyderabad that time. They visited Life University, and uh, she invited me and Lakshmi to Brussels. We visited their country, and uh, she took care of us so much, so much, very well. And we had a nice workshop. She organized. We lived with her in her home and uh, we observed her at a very close distance. The way uh, the she lives. Only through observation you will understand the vibration of a master. If you meet for one hour, only for a few minutes, you will not know much the depths of the master. We understood soon that she is a living saint. Though she is not awarded by anyone like a saint, but she is <laughs> like a saint. Very beautiful. And every day we used to feel so guilty for eating food because she stopped eating food since 15 years. She is not eating food. Last 15 years, no food. And uh, she lives on prana, she listens to music. That's her. Uh, energy. That's her food. She just smells the food. That's also energy. She she feels energized. And she is going to be with us today to share her wisdom. We open ourselves. And uh, how many of you can't understand English? I'm going to translate that. But more or less people understand. Right? That's perfect. <clears throat> so let us have Erika's uh, talk in English. And uh, she speaks from the heart. And uh, you can understand, they won't catch it. Yes, <laughs> yes. From the heart, they get it. Now over to Erika from Belgium. Thank you very much. Where I can be on assistance and so on. 
it's a delightful to be in India. I have been a few times and other visits before. I did once a whole trip through all the holy places in India a long time ago. You know, it was my first introduction. But uh, I feel very familiar with India because I know I've lived here in a past life. <laughs> and at that time, I was living in one life 400 years. <laughs> and I was also living in Prana already then. So, you know, some people were always able to do that. And so that's why it was very easy for me to just pick it up again. <laughs> but in this life, I'm just a very ordinary person at the same time, and yet having all the wisdom of the ages, I think I'm a very old soul. And so I have accumulated a lot of wisdom, and I like to share that. And also to share my lifestyle also. And, um, I have studied at many different places also. I used to be a translator in the European Union. Do you want to translate also? Please say, if anyone <laughs> don't understand properly, I translate them. It's okay. It's okay. It's simple English. Yeah, yeah. 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 That's perfect. They are able to understand. Yeah, you can understand. You know, you, you yeah. listen from your heart, and I speak from my heart, so you can understand. That's easy. And so this time I came here again with great pleasure, and uh, perhaps I thought of starting by reading you. Uh, some wise words. I got the, uh, I've got the, this little booklet which is called Opening Doors Within. And it comes from the Finkhorn Foundation in Scotland, some of you may know. It's a spiritual community in the north of Scotland. And that is my spiritual background. That's where I loved a lot. And I thought for many years I represented them in my country. And so, and this is uh, from uh, Aline Kelly, who was one of the co-founders of this community, and she always received guidance. She felt she called it her little inner voice, the, the divine one within. And so she received all the guidance all the time, and, and she wrote it down. And so this little book contains 365 pages, one page per day. And it's really universal. And so I have learned with this book, I read it every single day, and I looked what can I apply in this today. And so after 15 years of that, I suddenly realized I was so happy that I didn't need anything from outside anymore to be happy. It was all inside. And then I also realized I think I'm not hungry and I'm not thirsty anymore. <laughs> <laughs> and it was a bit strange and I had never heard about it. It was in the late 90s and nobody knew about this. And so I asked and asked around, don't you know anybody who? And finally one friend said, don't you know Jasmine? I said, who is Jasmine? Well, she is an Australian woman who teaches that. Aha, okay, I will have to meet her then. And then it was so funny how it happened because I uh, looked up on the internet and I found out she was a doctor. But there she was doing a weekend workshop, but I was away that weekend. So one of my friends said, okay, I'll go for you. And she came back and she said, she is really very good, you know, you must meet her. And she brought me an invitation for uh, an international workshop of her in Australia. And I was going to Australia that year to meet the Aborigines. And it was the same week. And I thought, okay, Aboriginals, as usual, as planned. And then two weeks before, I got an email. Unfortunately, the program with the Aborigines has been put off for one week. Can you still participate? And I had planned three weeks in Australia, so it was one week with just me, one week with the Aborigines, and one week with my niece who lived there. 
So, you know, when you're ready, the universe applies to everything you need. So it's very simple. And so that was how it started. And, uh, so, but before that, I will read you the text for today of this book. You hold a great responsibility in your hands, for I pour down upon you all my good and perfect gifts. Your feet have been set on a path leading to the new age, and all the time you are moving further and further into it and becoming part of it. You can no longer make excuses for yourself when you fail to do what you should be doing by saying you did not know or did not realize, for you are responsible for your every action. <clears throat> you know how to control your thoughts and your actions, therefore do so. Never try to hide behind ignorance, but know that within you, you contain all knowledge, all wisdom, all understanding, and it is simply a question of drawing from that limitless supply at all times. Give eternal thanks that you do know the truth, and that it is the truth that enables you to do what is required of you. Be at perfect peace. And I think that says it all. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yes. Yeah. And if you follow a path with this, starting every day with this kind of wisdom, you grow. It's as simple as that. And so, uh, my story has begun, I think, in 1986. Um, I was 49 then. Uh, I went to Fintor for the first time. And that was really a revelation for me because they, they do love in action. And so uh, I started looking at my life, you know, and I remember it really started, I was always somebody very curious about everything, especially the things that, that are strange or mistake or so. I always was interested in that. But then I had, I was a happy person all the time. My mother said, uh, you were always a sunshine. <clears throat> and uh, then I didn't really study much about spirituality. I worked on my past. I became a translator. But I traveled a lot. As soon as I had some time, uh, I came to Brussels. I worked at the European Union uh, since 1963. And so at that time, I had enough money. I had earned enough money to do one big trip each year. And so I always went to countries with holy sites, you know, the, the indigenous people who have a lot of wisdom. I was very interested in that and in archaeology. So I learned a lot in each trip to another, each year, another country, another country. And so I really piled up all the wisdom of all the indigenous people. And the, because for me it was important to know that we are all one. I had, I was really somebody. I was I was born during the war in Germany, the Second World War, and I could never understand why people fight each other. And so I I wanted to create peace. Why can people not understand each other, and why do they have to fight? This, this was really strange for me. I I wanted to be a peacemaker. Yeah. And so that was also one. So on the one hand, I did the peace work with lots of organizations that are creating peace. And uh, the, the spiritual part was not in that yet. It only came when I went to Finhorn, really. But I started traveling to all these places. And I think that also, I, I could see that we are all the same. We are all one family on the same planet. It's about black and some are some are white. And it doesn't matter. It's all the same. We smile the same way. We cry the same way. We all want peace. If you ask anybody, do you want peace or war? How many will say war? You know, it's all the same aspiration in, in everybody. <clears throat> And just mean often says, you know, ninety-five percent of the people on the planet are already convinced that we want peace. Because there's only a small minority that would say they want war. You know? 
it, it seems so crazy to hit each other, to kill each other. And it's not up to date at all anymore. This needs to go, and it is going. But it's going because we are all working for it. We are only, you know, the people who are, every single thought we think is exactly what happens to us. And if we criticize everybody, oh, this person, you're not good enough, you're not doing your job, you need to do it differently, you must do this, you know, this. I know the, the whole truth. And that's what the church has been telling us more or less also. So I, I was a Christian, originally in Lutheran. I thought that was a good basis, but it was too narrow. And so I studied also religious dialogue uh, about uh, all the religions to find out what the difference was. And I found what, what, what we had in common. And it's in all religions the same thing. It's only love. It's all based on love. And love is the greatest energy on the earth. And it carries away everything. It is the answer to all the questions. And it's no good to criticize each other or that, you know, even ourselves we criticize the Lord. I'm not good enough, I need to learn. And you know, in the Bible the Lord it says, uh, love your neighbor, but there's something more to come as thyself. And they have always said, love your neighbor. <laughs> you know, you can also forget about it. And and in truth it is so important to love yourself. Because if you don't love yourself, you cannot love the other. And so many people nowadays, you know, they, they are there, they always want to give, give, give to the other. I must make the other person happy. And then I will be happy also. But it's not like that. You, I must be happy first. And then I can help the others to be happy. And every person needs to make themselves happy. And uh, the people who are always complaining, I'm not happy, I need a partner to make me happy, and so on. That's not the way to go. You know, first be happy, and then you attract the right partner who is happy also. That's a good thing about the message, you know. It's really, <clears throat> this is what it is. If you, if you have only positive thoughts, the universe says, ah, there is somebody who understood how it is. And then and just can understand that we have to take everybody as they are, not criticize them, just take them for who they are. And that they have this divine one within like everybody else. We all have it. But sometimes it's buried under a lot of rubble, rubble, rubble. And you have to get to the core of it and bring it up. And if somebody who is still fighting with the rebel, sees you who already have found it, that can help. We can all be examples for those people. And just, you know, for the time being, just respect them with all their luggage. And then love them. And you will see they will change thanks to that. It's really amazing how it works. I've seen it in my own family where so there was one, my, one of my nieces had a husband who was very severe with the children and always criticized the shops and so on. And uh, with her, and I mean, she's my godchild and my godmother, we are both on the same wavelength. So we talk a lot together and she really loves him. He has so many good sides. He's reading spiritual books and everything. But he just has been, he has had a difficult childhood and he's fighting with himself, with his own family still. And so he's having a hard time. And yet he has so much good in him at the same time. And so this year, for the first time at Christmas when I was there, at, after, at the end when I left, he said, I'm so glad you came. You know, it's really been a blessing for us. And I go there for many, many years. You know, I always have celebrated Christmas with him. But this time he recognized and he said, thank you very much. So, you know, in the hardest heart came out. And never give up on anybody. Just stay with them and, and go for it. And you will see everybody responds to love. And if you are authentic, if it comes from your heart, whatever you do, 
and often think that the whole life is sacred. And you are sacred, and you are sacred, everybody is sacred. And go from that perspective. So live every day like that, celebrate every day in a divine manner. And you will see the people come to you like, you know, they, they are just attracted by this energy. And I see it more and more. The more I grow, the more people come to me and say, yes, what you say, I like it, you know. That really helps me to understand better the world. And I often talk with children also. I like to be with young people. Uh, and I tell them, you know, these things you should know at school. It's so important. It's part of our life. And it's much better to learn things like that than history or all the sciences and so on. <coughs> because, you know, we are, all, we are all connected, we are all the same family, but every single one is different. And there's not one person who can think your thoughts. They are all different. And so very often people say, but I have been living with this person for so long, and she still doesn't know, uh, you know what I like. Can't because she cannot look inside you. And very often I have these expectations in a relationship, in husband, wife. You know, why doesn't he know what I like? He's been with me for so long. But he does because he cannot look inside you. If you want him to know, you have to tell him. You have to communicate with him. So it's really important to, to follow all this and to just know that everyone is different. And yet, we are all one family. And that's a great thing. <clears throat> and also uh, about hierarchy. You know, that's no hierarchy. That's why I don't like to be called a master. I know that it's all within me and I have all this wisdom. But we are all masters. Each of us can be a master, and each of us can you know, grow with all this knowledge that we have and that you can read and get from other masters. And so that's how it works, really. And, and it's, this is coming. We are all working for it now, and more and more people are conscious of it. And I always say we are already the silent majority on this planet. And when you look, I don't know whether you look at YouTubes from uh, TEDx. Does anybody know those? They are fantastic. They are, you know, it's all about the new things in the world, like this young student who found a method to empty the, the oceans of the plastic. And, you know, real simple processes and, and all these energy saving processes. There's so much going on, and yes, every day there's new YouTubes coming out on this slide, TEDx. It's really worth it. And they're just 12 minutes or 20 minutes maximum. They cannot be more than 20 minutes. And you always can make time for one of them every day. And you will have 265 messages of that kind. And you will like that. And you will, you're filling yourself up with all this wisdom and, and the new technology also. And I've just followed the workshop with the Dalai Lama also for three days. And he was also with the scientists. It was a bit of a preparation for the uh, Pyramid Valley Conference because that was also a spiritual science. And uh, to be with the Dalai Lama is a blessing, really. He is so wonderful, and I've done some teachings with him also in Dharamsala. And uh, I've known him for many years already. So, you know, all these very wise people, and, and also uh, Nassim Haramai, who is a blessed scientist, he's fantastic. He's a quantum physician, and, and he is telling us, you know, science has now, the new science has proved that we are all connected. You can imagine like a network, like a spider net, but in three dimensions. You know, that the threads go everywhere, all around the planet and into the universe. Everything is connected. And so if we are all connected, we are all on the same wavelengths, really, in a way. And if, if one discovery is made at one end of the planet, at the other end, there's also somebody making the same uh, discovery. And it's really interesting to see what's going on in the world. And also, it's also the history of mankind. Because I can tell you that you will all be not eating physical food anymore one of these days, and it might come earlier than the thing. Because when we came from the stars, we came from the 
Kenyans and the other side. We came in thousands of years ago. And uh, we came in a, in a form that was, was much more etheric than we are now. And the task on this planet was to go into matter. And we have really gone through all the stages of getting deeper and deeper and deeper and deeper into the physics of matter. You know, deep in the earth and dig it all out and get all the stuff out. And now we have arrived at the bottom, top, you know, really the, the base bottom. And now we're moving slowly out of this. And we are all working together. And it's really everybody who needs to come. And we, need, we will give uh, humanity a push by thinking our way. And there's so many people all over the world. So I still travel a lot. And I'm connected to many people of all the directions of spirituality. And they're all doing their job. And it's not in the media, not in the ordinary media. There are a few more positive ones. But uh, you, uh, and perhaps it's also good that they don't talk about us. Because if they would write about us, they would ridiculize our work. They would say, this is no good, and we don't earn any money with that. And uh, they are still on the materialistic you know, base. And, uh, and so Jasmine also says that the media only write for 5% of humanity. The rest is, uh, you know, it's already convinced. And so if we are all getting together, and you see more and more things going on where everything comes together, is there's now corporations where there's no more hierarchy. Even the boss steps down and says, let's all earn the same amount of money, and everybody does what they can do best. And then we make all the decisions together. And there's more and more corporations who work this way already. And it's beautiful to see that in the planet. It is really amazing. And I always enjoy all the reports about these things, that everything is becoming like that. And, and all the political systems, the finances, nothing works anymore. Now, it's all going down the drain. And we will need new places. Also, education. It's not appropriate for the children. Children in the normal schools, they are bored. They read because it's not for them. They come with a totally different baggage already. They know more than the people, the teacher at school. And so, like, you are creating the new schools and the new universities, and that's the way it's going to go. And it's going faster than you think. Because it, it really, I can feel it coming, you know, more and more accelerating, and <clears throat> it's happy, and I really want to be here to be a, to testify that. And I can choose that for sure. I'm already 80. But. <laughs> I have I'm 80. This year I was 18 years old. But I have at the same time eternal youth. I chose. I chose because when you hear about old people, everybody says when you get older you lose your eyesight. You you can't hear anymore. You get sick. You you can't uh, your mind, you lose your mind and all that. And I thought about it. And I did like on my computer, you know, this little button that's called delete. <laughs> <laughs> I said delete. Now that was a good for my case. <laughs> and so, you know, this is how I live. And everybody says, wow, how do you do it? It's so simple. You can all do this. Because we, our body is made to live a, a few hundred years if we want to. It's just a lifestyle that we need to follow. And if we do that, then we can live as long as we want. And so I have lived in India for 400 years. You know, that's, as an example, there have always been some holy people who knew how to do this. But we can all do this. We can really, now we can all do this. There's no more difference between saints and sages and the normal people. We are all that. And so. I'm Erika. Swimming, she plays tennis. Yeah, okay, and uh, without eating food. <laughs> no food, no water, also, no 
water. We yeah. drink so much water, you know, we need to every day, every yeah. one hour we need to sip water. I observed uh, no water. Mm. And please share one of your tennis experience. Yeah. Not sad. Yeah. I, I was playing tennis in the, in the double and it was a very hot summer day. And I was really getting thirsty and what do I do? There's three more people. Uh, I can't go away, I can't run away from the court. So I thought I made a test. I said to the yoga bird, please give me something to drink. And within two seconds, my whole tongue was in the right. Water is coming from the side. Oh. You just need to have ideas, you know, and ask the universe for services you need. And now I have also asked, I don't want to make it difficult for me. My life is going to be flowing, in the flow, simple. And I said to the universe, please, everything that I do now needs to be easy. And if it's getting complicated, I say no. You know, I know I, I have I have no either sight or anything like that. You know, I have no inner voice. I don't see things. I have no pictures. I don't talk to the angels. I, I, yes, I have a communication with the angels. I don't talk to them, but I don't live there. So I never feel it slowly. I always feel surrounded by lots of beings somehow. But uh, I have nothing spectacular, you know, looking to the cosmos or things like that. Uh, but what I have is a, a fantastic intuition. And I always know what to do. And when somebody asks me, would you come to our country and so on, if I see when I reserve the flight, something gets stuck. Doesn't work out. I say, no, sorry. If it all flows, if it, like, and I have the feeling also, you know, like for India now, I, I ask the side, is it good to go? Oh, yes, you know, I, I really felt the whole energy going around, and I know that's right. And if something complicated, that's not it. But the other day, somebody was asking me, she said, I've got this relationship, and it's really hard. And it's the third time I'm trying again with him. I said, come on, if it's so hard, why do you do it? Stop it. <laughs> and, she did it. and she said, do you know, I feel so much happier. The weight is falling on my shoulder. <laughs> yeah, we only think we need to do this. And it's with me also, I love yoga. But I went for a year, it's good for you, go there. You know, I was really hard on myself. And then, you know, I couldn't do the exercise. My body really refused to do yoga. And eventually I thought, I tried several, you know, teachers, all the same. And so finally I thought, there must be something else. And then I discovered Qigong, and Qigong, yes, great, beautiful. <laughs> and now I do Qigong. And but we are very often like that, you know, this is good for you, you must do it. Look to us, you know, it's better to really check within, check with your intuition. Do you really think this is good for me? And also when you think about prana, if not really you think you wait, for example, being nourished by the universe, it's the universal energy that gives us everything. And we never say that we don't eat, we are nourished from an other source. That's what it is really. And it's life energy. And it contains everything we need. And um, when I started, I just did this meditation with Daphne where we are asking for all the minerals, all the vitamins, all the body needs. Please, can we have it? And now I just thank every day. Thank you for giving me all this. That's all. And you have to believe in it. If you have a doubt, it doesn't work. Uh, you yeah. have to believe. You have to believe. You have to believe. Yes. We we have beliefs that uh, without these vitamins, without this protein, my yeah. body will be uh, going to succeed. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. That kind of belief we have, uh -huh. which is uh, it's a limiting belief, right? Yes. Yeah. Exactly. Yes. Yeah. And uh, yeah, you believe differently. Yes. Yeah. You have a different yeah. belief. Yeah. You will receive energy from a different source. Yeah. An alternate source. Yeah. And it's limitless thinking. 
you know, just open more. It's got, don't listen to what Matt, you know, the, the doctors tell you. They said, you know, if you don't eat for four days, you're going to die. <laughs> Here we go. <laughs>
just for the fun, for the joy. And also music. And I also often say I'm nourished by music. It's very important to me. It's mainly classical music or folk music also of the same, of the indigenous traditions. I love that, all that. And then when I hear music, I'm transported absolutely into the universe, whatever. And that nourishes me. Or sometimes I have a, a foot massage for dinner. Instead of dinner. <laughs> 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 you know, you just you create your life every day. Be an artist and create with your body. It's so nice, you know, it's so easy and it can be such fun. And that's why I'm happy all the time and everything works for the best. And yeah, also, you know, when we are, people often say, I invite you to a, a meditation for peace. And I say, I don't think I'm coming because I am peace. <laughs> <laughs> Oh, I am love. I am light. I am joy. That's it. You know, with the, as long as I say we do it for something, and they're waiting for it to come, and it will never come because the universe says, oh, they're waiting for me. Okay, keep them waiting. <laughs> but if you are there, then we are all in all of it. It's so easy, isn't it? It doesn't matter of thinking about it. And you can all do that. Easy. So from today on, you lead a new life and you do all these things. Okay? Yes. <laughs>
You know, there are so many things we can do. How many of you are existing on planet Earth? About we get called, it's really, really rare that we find such beings. Uh -huh. yeah. How many of you are there? About, about 80,000. 80,000 people okay. are living on Prana, not even for <laughs>
and you know, stop, live in the moment, and enjoy every bite. You know, chew 50 times for each bite you eat. Then you will automatically eat less. And you know, you will realize that you don't need so much. And just but enjoy every single bite. And then also, start a conversation with your body if you really need this now. Skip one meal. Go from uh, become vegetarian if you are not yet, or afterwards vegan, afterwards raw food, afterwards juices, afterwards water, and afterwards nothing. You know, take it one step at a time. Don't rush yourself. And experiment. What does my body like? How can I? You know, just reduce one meal times a day and say, I'm not eating breakfast. Well, I'm not having dinner. Choose whatever is more convenient for you. And then chew 50 times each time you put into your mouth. And that will really help you and also make you appreciate food much more. Because, you know, we're just filling ourselves up somehow. And it's not necessary, you know, and it's much better for the resources of the planet if we eat less. And also, if we already, if we were all vegetarians, nobody needed to die of hunger. There are still thousands and thousands of people, children, and families dying of hunger. And if we didn't eat meat, there are enough resources. And you know, by creating all these uh, for the for the animals to live, cutting down the forest and the rainforest and all that. You know, takes away all the good energy because they, the rainforests have an important role to play with the clean air and so on. And so, instead of cutting the trees, you know, becoming vegetarian. And also, our our body is a, has a vegetarian uh, intestine. It's much uh, longer than you know the, the meat eaters have short intestines, and the, the vegetarians have long intestines. And so if you eat meat, it very often stays in your intestines and it rots. And that's where the illnesses come from. So think about it twice and really help, you know, our planet. There's so many recipes you can help and you can hear and go and see a dietitian or show when you want to know what is good for you and so on. But you can all do it yourself, you know. I decide today to be happy and make myself happy and at the same time be an example for other people. And you will see the link from more questions. I want to ask one question. Yes. Yeah. Uh, when we practice this eating raw food standard, yeah. uh, I practice uh, nearly like more than 40 days I was on eating food. But uh, after a few days, like after now eating for 40 days, but I felt a little weakness in my body, even though it's a routine for me. I was not hungry. Mm -hmm. I was not attached to any foods. Nothing. Yeah. I was able to eat normally. I was yeah. not uh, even feeling like drinking water also. Mm -hmm. I was stable. But uh, we feel weakness in our muscles, like in knees and all. Yeah. We feel little weakness. It may be that your emotional body is not healed yet. Because there's more to it than not eating and stopping to eat and uh, it's a consciousness. Because it's a level of consciousness that is also very important. And uh, just we recommends a lifestyle in eight points. And that lifestyle is meditation, prayer, silence in nature, uh, um, uh, um, mind management, you know, you keep watch your thoughts and change them. Uh, physical exercise, very important, and um, then it's uh, service, free service, it's unconditional service, unconnected, and, and then it's sacred music and a love diet. So if you practice all those points, that increases your level of consciousness. And it's very important at the same time. Because you cannot get it without being at the right vibration, the right consciousness. But um, you know, work on your spiritual practices very much. That's important. And I just mean has written a manual about it. 
uh, it's called the Delicious Lifestyle Program. And you can order that on the internet. Uh, and it's uh, on uh, www.lulu.com. L-U-L-U.com. <coughs> and it's, they print it out, it's self-printed. And they print it out <coughs> on their website and send it to you as a manual like this. And it costs about the value of $20. I don't know how much it is. It's not too expensive. And it's about 100 pages. And it's a, a day to day, you know, I teach it at home. And sometimes also, maybe when I'm here, I can do some teaching for those who are, you know, uh, because uh, it's really interesting to, you know, think about all the details and it gives you a whole lesson about you know, the 12 points. She's going yes. to stay here for till 14th, uh, till 16th. No, 17th. Till 17th. Yeah. Yeah. So uh, she's going to live on life in Westy Land. And all of you can most welcome to learn from her. Yeah. She'll be very happy to share more and more things with you. Yeah. Yes, I, I can be here or at the North University. I yes. probably, you know, go from one to the other. So <coughs> if you feel that. Like Wanting to see me again, you're welcome. Mm -hmm. And took me the oh, other yeah, yeah, yeah. There's one more manual, uh, which is also very good, and I teach it also. It's called Pathways of Peace and Being Essence. And there's 12 Pathways of Peace. And that's also very interesting. And once you have finished this manual, you are an ambassador. Like I, Ambassador, yeah, and when you have studied this, you become a diplomat of life. You like that? <laughs> <laughs> I think uh, these books are published here in India. Maybe they are. I think they're badly. Yeah, but I went and they were not. They were not. Not yeah, exhausted. Yeah. Yeah, they probably Yeah, probably. But you can get them on the internet and that's how it's really how it's easy. And you can get together to go one person ask for ten. Mm -hmm. What does food mean for me? Yeah, uh, you know, it's also the food for thought. There's food for thought, also, for example. And there's also, I said, my food is music, my food is beauty. So food is just a source of uh, energy, also. It's part of the energy. And uh, you can, it can either be physical food, or it can be on a different vibration. But it, it's a different kind of, it's more etheric as food. Well. And you can, you can get it also from the nature. Nature is a wonderful source of food. Is it uh, fulfilling or the need, or is it satisfaction? It, uh, satisfaction is that you know I need it, and uh, it is really something that is given to us for uh, you know for for also spiritual nourishment. So you know it, it exists in many forms, and they are all good. And even though if afterwards you feel like we need some kind of food you, you're craving for, why not have it? But don't eat piles of it, but just a little bit for the taste. And uh, initially, generally, when you're fasting, if you say Yeah. 
Yeah, yeah. I, I, I was very discreet at the beginning because it was early times and nobody had heard about it. And so, but my tennis partners, I, I lost weight during the first six months, uh, about five kilos or so. And my tennis partners, they saw me under the shower. What's happening to you? You're losing weight. I said, you know, but you can see I play tennis as usual. It's only, <laughs> I think it's only temporary. Don't worry about it. <laughs> and after three months, I said, no, I'm going to tell you. I have not been eating since three months. They said, what? <laughs> <laughs> and you are still alive. <laughs> Family, most of my family went along with it. They said, uh, you know, uh, as long as we see you're happy, that's a bad thing. And you're not trying to convince us. So that's fine. But one of my nieces, she said, you can't do that. You must see a doctor. And you have lost your radiance. She said, I don't think so. No. I don't take it personally. But if that's what you think, that's what you think. I don't want to convince anybody about that. But this is my lifestyle and not you. And I do this, and you do what you think you must do. And eventually, if you're true, if you're authentic, eventually they believe you. Yes, I think you are. And, so, and they like my joyfulness, my likeness of being, and so on. And now it's all integrated. All the children love me. And um, wherever I meet children, I love children. I've never had children myself. But lots of children around me, and wherever I see a baby, I run, oh, can I see you? And I smile to that. And also, one, I had a very good experience uh, that was at a wedding of one of my godchildren. I have eight godchildren, so I have some kind of children. And uh, the, there was this little boy of five months <coughs> with his mother. And I went to him and I said, hello, how are you? And just talking to him like that. And suddenly he started laughing, but so loud everybody was looking. And his, <laughs> his mother said, she's never done that with anybody else. <laughs> and we recognize each other. That's what it is. The babies, they, they are vibrating high, and they know when they meet somebody, I know you. And so the, he was happy to see me. And I was happy to, we all three of us laughed. <laughs> <laughs> and I thought had it with other babies also. And with animals also. I talked to the animals. And I was sitting in Vienna in the forest, and uh, quietly there, just enjoying the nature around me. And there were birds and other animals around. And then suddenly, some birds around me. And all of a sudden, they were sitting on my knees. <laughs> and then, after a while, a pony came, you know, very majestic, stood in front of me and looked at me. <laughs> and then, after a while, graciously disappeared. You know, and at one point, I was uh, uh, out in the country somewhere else, and there were cows. And I, I said silently to myself, more. Oh, Hello, cows, how are you? And all of a sudden, the whole group of cows came over, <laughs> <laughs> running from the other side. <laughs> you know, be open to anything and just have fun. That's really what it's all about. And just be creative. Be an artist of living. The art of living. Or in the sauna, I do sweat, but otherwise, not much. Yeah. Yeah. And for example, I'm going to say I, I exercise five days out of seven. I do fitness uh, twice or three times a week. I do uh, aqua gym. You know, it's really, really hard. <laughs> yeah. Once or twice a week. And I do qigong. 
and uh, once a week I go to a teacher and then I do my exercises at home also. And I draw the tennis every now and again when I get a chance. That's not regular. And cycling also. I just bought myself a new bike. A new bicycle. <laughs> But I had a father who was the sports teacher. So, you know, from my childhood, it has accompanied me. It was just part of my being. And my sister was a sports teacher also. It's in the family. But it's really important to exercise. And find the exercise that you enjoy. If you choose one like I with my yoga, that's not a good idea. You know, change and find one that you really enjoy. <laughs> I did a lot of jogging also at one point, but you know, once I can't change. And the longer I talk, I have always have new ideas. <laughs> <laughs> so we better stop. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> and it's so wonderful uh, and, uh, to hear from you, mm -hmm. from your experiences. And also one more experience uh, you share, mm -hmm. uh, you also inspire all of them about uh, your past life as uh, one. Um, um, and you got something. Yes. Yeah. Can you speak yeah. about it? Yeah. Yeah. Uh, another holy incarnation, and I was really got from Bingen, who is uh, an abbess of the Middle Ages, and she was the first. When she lived in Germany on the Rhine River. Uh, and uh, until that time, all the women were, uh, who wanted to become a nun were with the monks. And uh, she was also, uh, but they had their teaching <laughs> separately, but you know, they were in the same house. And so uh, one day, uh, a nun and a, a the uh, monk got together and created a baby, and the woman was thrown out of the convent, and the man not. And she got very angry and said, Come on, we are now creating our own memories. No more of that kind. And you know, if, if they you know, throw out the man, they should, and the woman, then they should also do the same with the men. They did it together. And so and she was a wise woman. She was she had all the, she was a healer. She had healed with all the herbs. She had all the knowledge about the herbs. She had fantastic visions. And she was talking about the God, the cosmos. She uh, God was for her the light. And she could see the light. And uh, there are books about her and uh, she told the visions in detail, and there was a, 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 a monk who could paint, and he painted them. They were beautiful, beautiful. And she composed music, Gregorian music, Gregorian chant, of a different kind than the male Gregorians. And I can listen to it for ages. It's so beautiful. <clears throat> and also, she was in contact with all the chiefs of government at the time, with the Pope. The Pope recognized her. And it was a moment in the Middle Ages when women still had an influence. After that, it all went down the drain. <laughs> but what is also important nowadays is that we create this balance between male and female. You know, and also, uh, some people have written about it that the, um, the feminine, the divine one, has been taken out of finances, and that's why it's not working anymore. So now they're really creating new things to restore this female divine one in everything because we've had so much of this male uh, you know, energy around that was guiding everything and not enough of the female. And yet we have, we all men and women, we all have female male. And we really have to come to the resource, to the sources again, that we both have that. And create the divine marriage. I celebrated my divine marriage uh, inside, so that my you know, male and female in me are in balance. And then you're not going, oh, I need a partner. I'm looking for a partner. I need it really now. And once you have this balance, 
If anyone comes, that's fine, but you can live without it also. And it's really, I'm really passionate about uh, you know, getting this balance back and uh, the understanding between male and female. We're not talking enough together. And it's very important to communicate and really create, you know, that men understand more of their divine part and us more of our male part. And I, I noticed, I saw, you know, at, uh, in this Elam uh, resort where we were, all the main jobs were taken by men and the women were, you know, cleaning. That was all they were doing. And I thought, you know, if and they didn't know enough English. They didn't understand uh, foreigners. And if you are sitting at the reception desk of a hotel, that is so important. And I've known in Europe all over, it's all women who are sitting in the reception areas in all the hotels. Because they have a mind, they learn languages faster, and you know, we need to really recognize what we can do better. And so that each one can do their share. And let's do it all together with what we can do best. And I will, uh, I've already talked with a friend of mine, and we want to create a male group with the, between the two women of us and talk to them about what's lacking in them and what we can help them to find and how to understand women better. I think it's very important, and I also saw at the Prime Festival all these young men have so many questions about themselves. They feel, you know, the women are growing up and they, they know so many things and they, the male is very mentally minded and they can do that much better. And for them it's important to go inside and really learn what's inside. And we need, we are already inside, we need to go outside. outside. That's more easy for us. And for you, it's more difficult to, to go inside because you've always been the doers, you know. You had to nourish the family, you had to go out uh, chasing the animals, uh, you know. And so that was your job, and take care of the money, and so on. And nowadays, it's really about finding everybody together, getting everybody together, and really find the partnership, 50-50%, you know, both of the same importance and not one more important than the other one. And I've always been looking for a male, you know, that would be my perfect partner, but I was never found one. I had boyfriends, and, uh, but there was never one with whom I wanted to stay all the time because there was always this imbalance. And so, and now I'm so happy on my own. And, and if I had been married, I probably wouldn't have done all the things I did on my own. As the Lidard, in having all the strengths, all the healing abilities, and music, and yeah. passion, yeah. and the, all the work that you are doing is like a continuation from this that yeah. life. Yes. Yeah. yeah. She gifted me that music. I remember. Do you remember that? Yeah, yeah. Sorry, sorry. Uh, I listened to that, and we are transported to a different world. Yeah. Uh, Gregorian music. She mm -hmm. composed it. Oh, yeah. And, and is it 18th century? No, much earlier. Much earlier? Yeah, she lived uh, around uh, 1000. Oh. So I know that she was born 980 or something like that. And she, she became very old. She was 80, I think. Yes. Yeah. And, uh, it's amazing to meet you, uh, Erika. And uh, we are so inspired. In your presence, we don't want to move out of <laughs> It's so soothing and it's like a, yeah. you, you are such inspirational. Yeah. All it's also like that in my groups at home. Yeah. You know, they, oh, it's so nice to be with you. <laughs> yeah. And they never get up. <laughs> Fortunately, I don't need to sleep very much. So I've got all this energy. Can you have And uh, please next uh, you can avail her uh, services knowledge. She is available here. Let us uh, not uh, waste that uh, opportunity. Oh, yeah. It's a golden opportunity. Yeah. You know, to, yeah. uh, she has come all the way from Belgium to here and we should utilize this opportunity. And uh, thank you.
thanks very much for coming here. It is all a great, it's a blessing for us. Uh -huh. And we have for everyone who would like to.